what's up guys we are back again with something that you've probably never seen before in clash royale currently the number one and number two player in the world are the exact same person he's got two accounts at the top of the world above everyone else and guess what he only plays one deck. And it's something that you would never expect. It's Goblin Drill. Goblin Drill is a forgotten art in Clash Royale, but when it's played at the top level with pro players that make zero mistakes, it is the best win condition. It can get directly on top of your opponent's tower, and when you defend with guards, Valkyrie, or bomber, the counter push that you get with it is unreal because it guarantees damage every single time it's on tower and you can get additional damage with the goblin spawning. It's a perfect way of chipping your opponent down when you're confident in your defensive skills. If any of you guys played Minor Poison back in the day when it was strong, this is basically an updated version of it. Many of you guys might have forgotten about it, but Minor used to be a win condition and it got nerfed like five different times. But it's all good. The Goblin Drill is ready to pick up where the Minor left off and make sure that Cycle Decks stay on top. This is definitely one of the most difficult decks in Clash Royale because it requires knowledge of your opponent's elixir and also a lot of different placements. But when you master it, you can push to number one in the world and number two at the exact same time. So let's go jump straight to some games and assert dominance. A huge thanks to everyone that's using Creator Code Sir Tag and supporting the channel. All right, so jumping into this one, crush your 21 clan, bro. Hopefully we can crush you and your clan and all your fans. All right, obviously, if I can get a fire spirit and counter a goblin barrel at the start. You know how much I said? That's a juicy plus two trade that we love. I'll take that any day of the week. I can also assassinate the Dark Goblin with a Fireball. Though I'm not going to have to spend as much Elixir because he spent a lot already. I don't think he's going to go in for another Goblin Barrel. I think he's going to slow down, drop a Princess in the back. Maybe have Skeleton Barrel though. Oh, wow. Princess of the River. This guy is anything but passive. He's just dropping everything he can. Maybe I can go in for guards and cycle to a Goblin Drill because he's going to have Knight. When you play against someone with Knight and no Valkyrie, you want to take the opportunity to spam them as quickly as you can to get that value on the tower. Hate how good the Dark Goblin is. That range is all the way from the other side, man. Wait, it walked in that lane now too. Okay. All right. I'm going to log here simply because I can Fire Spirit and then go in for a Bomber. And this will completely counter the Goblin Barrel, no matter where he drops it. If you guys don't know, you will know soon. This is amazing. You want to use your Fire Spirit, have that holding it, and then you just double drop. So notice this. I double dropped it. I dropped the Bomber and the Fire Spirit. You can do that with Valkyrie. You can do that with Guards. You can do that with Princess. Whatever card you have, along with the Fire Spirit, that will work out wonderfully for you. And he's going to overcommit. He dropped way too much Elixir there. Because now he doesn't have Log. He doesn't have Princess. He doesn't have Knight. I don't know if he's able to stop the Goblins or the Guards locking onto the tower. Look at that. That's ridiculous. You don't have Log, so you can't stop it, dude. There's a reason that this deck is played at the top one in the world consistently by Asaph. Because there's so much defensive utility that you can get from your cards. And if your opponent makes a mess up, you immediately punish them. If they don't have Dark Prince or Valkyrie or they don't have enough Elixir for it, or even if they do, you can drop your Goblin Drill off to the side like I'm about to show you. And the Goblin will spawn behind the Goblin Drill. And then when I go in for the guards here, what will happen is he has to go for the Valkyrie in front or he has to go in for the Valkyrie in the back. And you're not able to hit the guards and you're not able to hit the Goblins at the same time. So it's really tough to defend all at once. Look at that guard still hammering in the damage. You love to see it. And I can consistently play more aggressive with this deck too because if you go in for a Goblin Barrel and I have Fire Spirit plus like Bomber or something else, I can defend cheaply with a one elixir investment of the Fire Spirit and then get counter push with the Bomber instead of dropping a log that doesn't give me any counter push at all. And yeah, you have a fast cycle, but my fast cycle is great and I can keep up with the quickest of log bait decks. So despite this guy having a very strong deck that almost everyone in the meta plays with Dark Goblin and Log Bait, it's no match for our deck. We have so many different answers to you. Heck, I can afford to log on top of your Dark Goblins and Bridge Bam and then use Fire Spirit on your second Goblin Barrel if you cycle back to another one. It just doesn't matter. GG, well played, and peace out, buddy. It was a pleasure playing against you and asserting dominance. We are lucky enough to play against the one and only McLovin Clan. I have no clue what this guy's gonna do, but I'm loving it. We're dropping guards at the river, and we're gonna give him some kisses. So, okay, I, I spoke too soon. It's probably gonna be a graveyard deck with Skeleton King and Valkyrie, because that's what most people are running in this meta. So I need to make sure that I have his Skeleton King and Valkyrie out of cycle if I'm gonna get massive damage with the Goblin Drill. But he's going to go for an Electro Wizard. Okay, I can Fireball that. How many Skeleton Kings and Electro Wizards are going to be played against today? Not many. Most of the time, it's going to be like... Inferno Dragon and other cards like that. Oh, wow. So, E-Wiz and Electro Spirit to reset my Inferno Tower. This is 
you know, a bit scary of a time to be in Inferno Tower. If you're trying to melt things, there's a chance that you're going to get reset every single time. I'm going to get guards down and a bomber here. I think there's a chance he could freeze me. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but, you know, it would fit the theme of his deck of perpetually resetting everything I throw at him. I'm not going to spam into him. I want to go other side. Huge fan of making sure that I don't counter push in the exact same lane as the graveyard player. If you can go opposite lane of graveyard, you're generally going to have a better time because if they defend, your skeleton uh, king pushes and they go in for uh, executioners on defense. You're going to have to defend a graveyard, and I'd much rather have the graveyard go in the healthier tower than the weaker one. So that's why I'm switching sides. That's why I want it to go in the other lane. It's just something that I've learned from losing a lot of games, and hopefully that will help you guys out. Whenever we learn things, I want to be the first person to tell you guys, hey, this is not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I've endured the losses, so you don't have to. I'm going to go in for a goblin draw in front. Maybe the bomber can go behind and then have the bomber splash onto the tower if he drops like a skeleton king or if he goes in for some other source of splash damage to finish off the goblin drill then we can get damage with the bomber on top of the tower too and i love doing that i think it's better for me to go in wait and then go for a valkyrie and guards because if we go and rely on the inferno tower too heavily it's not going to counter push and it will probably cost way too much elixir so rather just going for the valkyrie and the guards that will be able to fully counter the pekka and then also utility on offense afterward while you know having a little elixir advantage here i'm at nine elixir and i get counter push so he decided to go in the same lane as me now. Uh, he's always switching to be in the same side, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Sometimes you just have to play how you got to. And uh, in this moment, I'm going to go for a Furry Tower at the river. My Try to win the battle at the river here very decisively with two bombers. I think that that Electro Wizard is going to die. And then also the Executioner is going to get melted too. Offensive Inferno Tower, guys. You only see that with like Tesla, but times are changing. You're not playing Expo anymore. You're playing Skill Drill, basically Expo, but with Inferno Tower instead of Tesla. And I can cycle some Fireballs and walk away with a win. The guy went for an extremely aggressive Skeleton King spam into absolutely nothing. So I'm going to go for a Goblin Drill on offense, Fireball when I get the opportunity, and that should be enough damage to close out the game, especially because he doesn't have a Valkyrie or anything. He'll go for an Electro Wizard, but that's not going to be enough. Oh, wow, it was enough. I lied to you guys. <laughs> we do win. All I have to cycle is one more Fireball. Be my big moment. Oh, the fireball didn't even win the game. The Valkyrie did. Okay. Well, the fireball was right there for moral support then. All right, so jumping into this one. Undiscovered is this clan. Dude, you're going to discover real quick that this deck is dirty. I love playing it despite it being so difficult because it feels like I always get better whenever I'm playing a fast cycle deck with so many different decisions that I have to make in split seconds. And I can see why this deck is consistently played at number one in the world because the potential for damage is off the hook. If you're able to get like a goblin drill on your opponent's tower with a bomber coming at them and they don't have the right cards in cycle, the damage is relentless. Look at the goblin drill. Boy. The dude goes in for a premature barb barrel and then all of his units are basically at low HP to the point that I don't have to deal with. I could fire spirit here, but I'd rather go for guards because it will give me more counter pressure. I don't think that we take any damage on the guards either because they have longer range. Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. I guess that Barbarian just had to prove me wrong. He's just like, Jake, you think that, but a little bit too strong. I'm Bob the Barbarian for a reason. If you go for a graveyard, I'm going to set up a Bomber here and then Valkyrie. I'm going to Valkyrie at the river because I don't think that the Golem is going to reach the Valkyrie in time. So he's going to have to spend something in front of the Golem or he's going to take a ton of damage. As a standard Golem player, this is how they play the game. They just ignore it. That Valkyrie's on the tower and he doesn't care. He's literally eating thousands of damage by the second. This man is a lad, mad lad. Okay, I want to go in for a fireball really badly. Uh, I definitely do. Probably going to be okay here depending on what happens. We can get guards and then... Ooh, wow, the bat died, so I didn't need to go for the fire spirit. I 100% overcommitted. You live, you learn, you play better. But overcommitting and still being in the 1,500 damage lead... That's pretty good. We vibe with that. The bomber is going to give us stupendous counter pressure, and we can go for a goblin drill as well. I don't know if the bomber is going to be ahead or behind. Please go behind. No, you're going to get targeted by the tower. You had one job. It is what it is. I think that I'm able to minimize the rest of the value with the Valkyrie. So if the Ice Wizard locks onto that and then it's slowed down, it gives us more time to deal with the Mega Min or the Mini Pekka. It's like the Mega Minion on the ground, right? It feels like the same thing, at least for me. Um. Do I high Inferno Tower here? No, I'm going to Fireball and Log. If you Fireball and Log on the Valkyrie, it kills it. And then he can't spawn any more bats. Or not the Valkyrie, the uh, <laughs> the Night Witch. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, if you Fireball and Log on the Night Witch, 
he can't spawn any more bats and then you're able to get damage on the tower too so if you're playing at a higher level that is generally what every single pro player will be doing finishing that thing off as quickly as they can on their opponent's tower and making sure that the opponent gets absolutely no counter pressure with it Maybe I can go for a fireball here if I want to. There's also a chance that I can fireball on top of the mini P.E.K.K.A. So then he thinks that the mini P.E.K.K.A. is going to get a hit. And then it doesn't. And then he mistimes the bar barrel. Look at that. That worked out exactly as we thought. So if you make your opponent mistime the bar barrel because you go in for the fireball, then they're not going to be able to clean up all the goblins from the goblin drill because the bar barrel needs to get that last hit on the goblin drill to finish it off. That worked out really well. You can also use a fireball on top of Valkyries and push the Valkyrie back when it's about to pop so then the goblins don't get assassinated by the Valkyrie. It's just so satisfying crushing golem players that will eat thousands of damage with a Valkyrie on their tower and go completely all in for no reason. After that dominant W, now we're 8,500 in the world. All right, guys, so jumping into this game, I really want to rush off to the races with Log. I thought I had Log in my starting hand. I thought I selected it, but apparently I had nothing. <laughs> Spamming the Log at the river. Okay, all right. A good start. We're up casual 100 damage because the dude just doesn't respond to that i'll go for a goblin drill and see if we can waken him let's go bro what you gonna do so if you've got lumberjack the chances are you're gonna have a balloon deck all right so we've got a fire tower so it's gonna be a pretty good matchup for me all things considered maybe it's gonna be a bridge spam deck maybe he's gonna spice it up with something completely different uh, do I Inferno Tower here? Nah, I'm going to Valkyrie and kite that to the other side. If I Inferno Tower too early, he could balloon other side, and then I would have to Fireball it. So I, I don't want to mess around with that too much. Oh, I can activate King Tower. You guys haven't done this before. This is really fun. So I fully expect this guy to go in for the freeze, and then we're going to be able to activate King Tower with the balloon. If you don't know, now you know. So Goblin Drill is one of the best cards on defense against E-Giant and Balloon for that reason. And it just pops off. Like, this guy, from now on, every single one of the cards that rushes at the river is going to go head first into the King Tower activation. Yo, he was sleepy at the start. Our King Tower was sleepy at the start, but now he's going to be angry, and our King Tower is also angry, too. It's ready to get some rejuvenation. It's ready to get some vengeance and attack our opponent. If only the King Tower could move. Imagine if there was, like, a Clash Trial ability that just lets your King Tower move and do damage. That would be so broken. I do have to go for a Goblin Draw on defense here, just in case. Like, there was no other card that I had available, and I'm like, oh, it's just so much elixir to counter an Inferno Dragon. I think Inferno Dragon, for this deck, is the worst thing. It melts your Valkyries. You don't have a good way of killing it. You can stack them up, and you only can fight it on your side of the map, too. So there's a lot of problems with that card, in my opinion. I'm going to go in for guards here, and then I can go in for an Inferno Tower off to the side so it can snipe that. And I should be able to keep the Electro Dragon really far away. If you want to go in for a Freeze... Feel free to, man. It's just not going to give you anything. I isolated all of my opponent's troops there. And the only thing that I could have done better is dropping the Fire Spirit so the Electro uh, Dragon locks onto that instead. But other than that, I think I've been playing this game pretty well. I'm going to go for a Goblin Drill here. And then... Ooh, see, this is risky. Like, I hate the Inferno Dragon. It's just such an annoying card. He thought I was going to go Goblin Drill there. And I just swerved him and went other side. I wonder if the guards win me the game. There's a chance that the guards plus Goblin just savage this man. Ravage this, sir. I'm going to go in for a Bomber and a Valkyrie because the Inferno Tower is just melting every single one of his cards at the river. I don't think he's back to a... I don't think he's back to an answer. Is he back to a Bowler? I was, I was going to say. I think he could be, but I don't know. If the Valkyrie can lock on a tower, that's always a vibe. I'm going to go for guards on the other side with another Fire Spirit. Likely want to get a Bomber and a Valkyrie down if possible. We'll see how well this works for me. I think the Bomber should be able to kill that. And then I can go for a Valkyrie. Make sure that I get the Inferno Tower down. And then Guard Surround on top of the Bowler. The reason why I'm playing so aggressively is because I feel extremely comfortable with the defensive Inferno Tower plus Fire Spirit when you have the King Tower activated. If you guys are able to make that happen, this game might be a wild ride. It might take a long time for me to win. I'm going to go for another Inferno Tower here. I think that does pull. And with 30 seconds remaining... I just need to be on the lookout for defense because if he gets a bowler to connect to my tower with the uh, tornado, that's where you can lose the game. It's crazy that he's playing this deck because it's just so bad right now, but it's pretty good into ours, I would say. I'm going to fireball. I hope that I hit the uh, lumberjack. I do not. Now it's looking really bad, guys. It's looking really bad because I didn't hit the lumberjack. If I hit the lumberjack, I think I would have won the game. So, all things considered, I played that about as well as I possibly could have. I just missed that Lumberjack with a Fireball. And because it was raged up, he was able to get multiple Lumberjacks on the field to get it out of the position so I wasn't able to hit it with the Fireball. 
Some games you win, some games you lose. We'll bounce on the next one. So this is definitely one of the toughest decks to master in Clash Royale, but if you do, you'll be at number one in the world like Asif. This guy is able to consistently push two accounts to top five in the world at all points in time. No clue how he does it. So first things first, we're playing against a Lava Hound player. Fortunately for me, I'm going to end up having an Inferno Tower, so if I apply a lot of aggression on the other side with the Goblin Drill forcing out some Elixir here, we can get some massive value with our Inferno Tower on top of the Lava Hound. That's what I'm going to vibe with. I'm going to go in for the Inferno Tower as quickly as I can to melt down that uh, Lava Hound and then maybe get Guards down or Fireball. Better for me to go in for Guards or Fireball. Definitely going to be better for a Fireball if he's stacking up that much stuff. My time has come. Are you kidding me right now? Look at that fireball value. We burst him up in flames, and that man is not happy. I wonder if the bomber at the river was a bad decision. It seems not that great. It will give us one hit on the tower, but at the same time, like, probably could have gotten that damage with the goblin drill anyway. And a fire spirit here cleans up the rest of the fly machine with only two hits on the tower. Oh, only one. I'm used to that getting two hits. Guess that the fire spirit just puts in way more work than I expected. Let's go, guys. So, I can go in for a Goblin Drill here if I want to. I think it's going to be better for us to wait a little bit. Oh, wow. What? Are you kidding me? You're going to try to defend that tower with the Tombstone? I'm just going to ignore the Tombstone. That's three Elixir wasted, my dude. I can switch up and swerve you and go other side. And now you're going to have absolutely no Elixir to deal with that. That's insane. So, we spread him thin. He's going to have a Skeleton King out of cycle for those next Lava Hound push. And the way that this deck that he's playing operates, it is full Skeleton King spam with Miners and other stuff. You're going into a Valkyrie and a Bomber, so I I don't know what you're thinking, but maybe you're not thinking. Like, that is a very interesting decision. It didn't even help his card cycle either. Like, he had to cycle another card to get back to his big spam with the Miner and Lava Hound. So, yeah, I'm interested to figure out what this guy was uh, planning there. I'm going to get guards on the other side, always trying to go opposite lane aggression whenever I get the opportunity to. Maybe I can snipe the Mega Minion first if I wait with the Inferno Tower. That would be ideal. So then I won't have to spend as much Elixir on it. Yeah, if we snipe the Mega Minion, that's the hard hitter and the heavy damage dealer of his deck. I'm going to go in for a Fireball, clip the Skeleton King as well, so then he's not going to be able to afford the ability in time. I'm going to get Guards down, so then when the Lava Hound pops, it's going to be... Oh, I forgot about the arrows. Why am I so stupid? I should have cycled that at the river. You live and you learn and you always play better, but this is one of those moments that I think I outplayed my opponent. He made some slight slip up, went in for the Tombstone, and for whatever reason, gave me an amazing opportunity, and we snagged a lot of damage on the other side. And after securing that early Elixir and damage lead, it was really easy to walk away with a win because this deck's defenses are rock solid. And after that one, we are 7,400. Like, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.